Hello viewers, uh, welcome to another mathematics lesson. So right here with me, I've got 2023 mathematics paper 1 for internal candidates. So this is a paper that was written last year, okay, by the grade 12. So I want us to go through from question 1 up to question 5. This is our target. So let's see how we can answer these questions. So this is our first question. Evaluate, you have 8 over 27 raised to the power of 1 over 3. So the moment you look at this question, the base is uh, a fraction, 8 over 27. The exponent right here is also a fraction. So what are you supposed to do? So the first thing, I'll take you back to the laws of indices. If you have uh, m as your base, that is raised to the power 1 over b. Okay, so the way you can write this, you write it like this. So this b, okay, it will represent the root of this base, okay? So it will be written as root of b like this, then m, okay? So this base m raised to the power of what? A1, like this. So we are going to apply this principle to be applied right here. So what we are going to do is we will write 8 over... 27 raised to the power of 1 over 3. So here, remember what I've said? 1 over 3. So this denominator 3 represents the third root of 8 and the third root of what? A 27. Okay? So we are going to write, say, third root of 8 divided by third root of 27 okay so here it means this 1 over 3 it's affecting both 8 and 27 that is why i've written like this okay so from here uh, i'm going to write the third root of 8 it's a number that you can multiply by itself three times to get 8 so we know that if we say 2 times 2 times 2 2 times 2 4 4 times 2 to give us 8 Okay, so the third root of 8 is a 2 over the third root of 27. When you multiply 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 times 3, it's a 9. 9 times 3, this will give us a 27. So the third root of 27 is a 3. So this is our answer, which was 2 over 3. So we have now come to question B right here. Factorize completely. So we write the question, which is 3x cubed minus 27x. So they want us to factorize this. So first thing, we take a look at the numbers. We have a 3, we have a 27. What is the highest common factor of 3 and 27? It's 3. So the moment you identify that, you factor out 3. In terms of the letters, we have x cubed and x right here. So it simply means that letter x is common okay so the moment you factorize 3x you write open bracket so now here you start dividing 3 into 3 it's a 1 okay so x into x cubed so this means that you have uh, x cubed over x this means x times x times x divided by x so this x and this x you cancel remain with x x which is x squared so here you write x squared minus this x and this x it's a one okay so three into itself it's one three into 27 it's a nine so this is what you are going to have now from here you have not factorized completely because inside the brackets you have x squared minus nine so this nine this 9 can be written in index form with a power of 2 so that we maintain this one squared and this one squared. So we're going to have 3x, open bracket, x squared minus 3 squared. All right. So what has happened here is this is a 9. The way you can write 9 with a power of 2, we can write 3 squared, meaning 3 times 3. That's when we're going to have 9. So this and this is one and the same. So from here, we can apply now the difference of the two squares. So we write 3x, open bracket, x minus 3, we close, open bracket, x plus 3. 
So this is our answer. We have guys. So we come to question three. Simplify to a minus five b in brackets a minus b plus a b. So step one, we write our question to a minus five b open bracket a minus b then plus a b. Okay, so from here, they want us to simplify. So step one, since we've got brackets right here, you need to open these brackets by multiplying with a negative 5b, which is outside right here. So you write 2a minus, so minus 5b times a, you are going to have minus 5ab. Okay, then minus 5b times minus b. So minus times minus, it's a positive, okay? So 5b times b, this will give us 5b squared. So we, are, we have opened the brackets right here by multiplying with a minus 5b. So we write plus a b. Now from here, we can collect the like terms. So we can see that we have a 2a right here. We write it the way it is. Minus 5b, 5ab, sorry, 5ab, this 5ab. Then the right term of this, it's this one right here, which is a positive AB. So I'll just write positive AB, okay? Then plus 5B squared. Now from here, we will say 2A, so minus 5AB plus AB, this will give us minus 4AB. So here you have you have something like this minus 5ab plus ab okay so in other words it's ab minus 5ab so you have 5ab then you get rid of ab so that's why you're having a minus 4ab which is this one right here okay then from here we say plus 5b squared so this is your answer come to question 4 so question 4 reads, the point A, negative 5, comma 3, and the point B have a midpoint 4, comma negative 2. Find the coordinates of B. Okay, so here what they are telling us is that we have uh, the coordinates or the point A, which is having negative 5, comma 3. Okay, then we also have, uh, we also have the point B, which is having uh, which is having 4 comma negative 2. So the point A and the point B have a midpoint. All right. So this B doesn't have um, this B doesn't have the coordinates. So just say x comma y. Okay. Because the point A and the point B have a midpoint. So meaning this B doesn't have um, the coordinates. So I'll write x comma y. So they are saying if you have a uh, a straight line let me demonstrate all right so this is what they mean you have if you have a straight line a b this is a straight line so in this line they are telling you that the midpoint of a and b is lying right here this is where the midpoint is okay so in the question they have given us that the midpoint of point a and point b it's four comma negative two so this midpoint was having 4, negative what? 2. So we need to find the coordinates of B, which are presented by X, Y. So this is very simple. What you are going to do is just come up with the formula that you use to find the midpoint of point A and B. So we are going to say midpoint, midpoint of A, B is equal to, so this is the formula where you say X2 plus X1 divided by 2 okay comma y2 plus y1 divided by 2 so this is the formula that we are going to use to find the midpoint of a b so remember you come up with your data so in your data we have the coordinates for a which are negative 5 comma 3 so these coordinates for a we are going to name this x1 this is the um y1 okay now from there we also need the coordinates for b 
So the coordinates for B, we said it will be X, Y because we have not been given. They want us to find these coordinates. Now, midpoint of A and B. Okay? Midpoint of A, B. So the midpoint of A, B that we have been given, it's right there in the question, which is 4, negative 2. So 4, negative what? 2. This is the, this is the midpoint right here. This is the midpoint for comma negative 2. So we're just going to substitute. So right here, right here we have got midpoint of AB. We are going to put these coordinates 4 comma negative 2. So we're going to say 4 comma negative 2. This is the midpoint of AB. Right here started with midpoint of AB is equal to open bracket. So uh, your x2. So remember your a is this one, which is having x1, y1. So your x2. We are going to pick from the coordinates of B, which is X2, Y2. Alright? So those are the coordinates we need to find. So where there is X1, X2, we are going to put X. X, okay? Uh, plus X1 is a negative 5. So in bracket, negative 5, like this, over a 2. Comma. So right here, Y2, which one is our Y2? This is Y. Plus, our y1 is a 3 right here, over 2. So, I hope you are following. So, a, b, we named x1, y1, x2, y2. This is a, b. The midpoint of a, b is a 4, negative 2. So, I've just replaced right here. So, from here, we can now start equating. So, this 4, this 4 is representing the x coordinate. This negative 2 is representing the y coordinate. So it simply means that this 4 will be equated to this first coordinate. Okay? Because we need to find the value of this x. So I have to equate it with the x coordinate from the midpoint, which is a 4 right here. So I'm going to say x plus negative 5 over 2 is equal to 4. This 4 right here. So from this stage now, what we need to do is just to open the brackets. We are going to say x positive times minus, it's a minus 5, over a 2 is equal to 4. So this is a fraction, this is not a fraction. We divide by 1 so that we close, multiply. So from here, we are going to say x minus 5 times 1, we'll get the same thing, x minus 5 equal to 2 times 4, this will be uh, 8. Right, so from here we can proceed where we say this negative 5 will go where 8 is. We are going to have x is equal to 8 plus a 5, like this. So from here, x equal to 8 plus a 5, you'll get a 13. So this tells us that the coordinates for x was a 13. Now let us find the coordinates for what for, for y, which is right here. So remember. We said this 4 to this first coordinate, then this negative 2 will be equated to this, okay? Negative 2 will be equated to this right here. So, we are going to say y plus 3 over 2 is equal to negative 2. So, we divide by 1, we cross multiply, y plus 3 times 1, it's y plus 3 equal to 2 times negative 2. This will be a negative what? 4, right here. So I hope uh, I hope it's clear. So from here we just say y this will go this side. It's going to be y equal to negative four minus three. Okay. So this will give us y is equal to negative four minus three. This will be uh, negative seven. So the y coordinate is negative seven. Therefore, therefore, the coordinates of point B. Remember, we said x comma y so we just substitute we say b where there is x we put the x coordinate which is a 13 comma where there is y we put the y coordinate which is a negative 7 like this so these were the coordinates of what of b so we are done answering this question now we can proceed to the last question all right guys so we've now come to our last question which is question 5 given that um position vector of op is equal to 4 and 13 
and the point Q is 16,8. Find magnitude of PQ, meaning you find the distance of PQ. Now we've got magnitude. So since we are dealing with vectors, so what we are going to do is, uh, we have been given the position vector of PQ, or P, which is 4 and 13, okay? So this Q is the coordinate, it's a coordinate form. Now we need to come up with OQ, which is the position vector of Q, which will be 16, 8, like this. So they want you to find the magnitude of PQ. So before you find the magnitude of PQ, first find the PQ vector, okay? So to find PQ vector, we are going to, let's consider this shape like this. You have seen, so if you have your origin right here, you are going to have point P right here. Then you are going to have point Q right here. So this vector will move from O to P, where you have this coordinate, which is uh, 4 and 13. Then from OQ, we have found this, which is 16 and 8. So we need to find this vector, uh, PQ. So to find PQ, we need to move, okay? So to find PQ, we need to move where we say, PQ is equal to PQ. We'll say PQ is equal to PO plus OQ. So I'm going to say PO plus OQ like this. Okay. So now from here, we need to substitute. You say PQ equal to. Now PO is against the direction you can see. So we are going to put a negative to this 4 and the 13. Then we say plus. OQ, we have said is 16 and 8. All right, so I hope that we are, we are moving together, okay? Now, from this point, what are you going to do? You're going to write PQ equal to, so uh, negative times this positive 4, it will be a negative 4, then you're going to have negative 13. So what I've done is this negative, I just multiplied the, the signs which are inside the brackets. Then plus, we have a 16, then 8. Okay? Alright, so from here, we come up with uh, the vector PQ. So negative 4 plus 16, negative 4 plus 16, this will give us negative 4 plus 16, this will give us what? A 12. Okay? Then negative 13 plus 8, negative 13 plus 8, this will give us negative 5 okay so this is the vector for pq now the question is saying find the magnitude of vector pq find the magnitude of vector pq in other words the distance okay so from here this is what you are going to do all right so we will say therefore the magnitude of pq vector okay is equal to so let me write here the magnitude of pq vector is equal to you use this simple formula y, x squared plus y squared okay so from here you say the magnitude of pq vector is equal to now right here we had this position vector of pq so to change this into a uh, coordinate form it will be 12 comma negative 5 okay like this so this is your x this is your y so from here where there is x2, you put this 12. I will say 12 squared plus. Where there is y squared, you put this negative 5. In brackets, negative 5 squared. So therefore, the magnitude of PQ is equal to 12 squared is 144. Plus 5 squared, this is a 25. So from here, we are going to say the magnitude of PQ vector is equal to so 144 plus 25, you're going to have 169. So our final answer, therefore, the magnitude of PQ vector is equal to, okay, so we find the square root of 169, which is a what? A 13. Then we even put units. So this is our answer. So thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Make sure you like the video, you share it. You also subscribe to my YouTube channel. This has been your presenter, Mr. Mlenga. Bye-bye.